Hello, my name is Andy Jones. I'm in the School of Public Health here, and I'm really happy to be able to introduce uh, Sarah Soderstrom. She's a professor in organiza organizational studies in the program in the environment here at U University of Michigan. Uh, Sarah looks at how corporations engage in societal sustainability challenges, and I noticed she has two, di two degrees, two different engineering degrees, chemical and environmental from U of M. Um, so we're happy to have her here, and she will be speaking about food, entrepreneurship, and social change, and her favorite food is ice cream. <laughs> Great, thank you for having me here today. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about a project I've been working on with Kate Heinze, who's a professor in the School of Kinesiology here, looking at this intersection of food, entrepreneurship, and social change, and how food brings, plays a role at bringing different people into entrepreneurial ventures, and specifically engaging in city revitalization efforts. So we focused our story on Detroit, and I think a typical story that we may see in mass media around Detroit focuses on issues of the bankruptcy, um, strikes, issues of education, food access, et cetera, this negative lens. But what we wanted to focus on was flipping that switch a little bit and looking at the positive lens of organizing in the city of Detroit. And so you see this broadly as businesses and foundations are working together to engage in various revitalization efforts, but it also crops up interestingly across the food system. So you see a promise of the future in the citizens that are in the city, as well as people who are moving and engaging with the city with their work. Um, in an area of entrepreneurship that is often viewed as the solo entrepreneur on often his, not her own, working to try to conquer and gain more money. Uh, instead, what we often saw was restaurants working together, um, opening their kitchens to entrepreneurs who are starting off their businesses but needed a licensed space and didn't have the investment to get that on their own. Um, in fact, helping to launch businesses that may end up being a next door competitor in the future. We saw spaces being shared across a number of different elements, whether that be for um, buying food, making food, meeting with each other to help work with that, and a general commitment to a focus on local. So thinking about what food and what food in uh, entrepreneurship looks like locally. A lot of this aligned with a broader movement around good food. So thinking about equitable and widely distributed food and intentionally kind of thinking about um, the quality of the food. But the other thing that came in quite interestingly is that there was a focus around bringing together diverse people and providing access into this opportunity uh, to all. And one of the places that we found exemplified this and was the focus of our study was Food Lab in Detroit. Uh, how many of you have heard about Food Lab? We have for those of you who have, I hope that you're as inspired as I have been. For those who have not, I highly recommend checking them out. It's a, we would call kind of a social movement organization that's working to connect entrepreneurs together in the food space to help them engage in businesses that are sustainable. So connecting with economic goals, social goals, and environmental goals. And we saw that this happened well in the way that they brought together over 100 different producers and distributors that were promoting this movement and thinking about the different resources that were needed for them to succeed. It's one of them, I love this language, a bunch of hustlers who are passionate about food, right? Let's all come together and think about what that means for the city of Detroit as well as for the broader state. We had a great team that was working with us with thousands of hours in the field and way more pages than many of our undergrads wanted to write as we looked at 200 different organizations and did find there that they were able to bring together diverse entrepreneurs promoting movement goals. And what was interesting here was that we did see the diversity of goals. So not just economic goals, but also social and environmental goals based on where they were sourcing their food, where they were opening their businesses, who they were employing, and really thinking about a broader lens of sustainability than what you often see in more of a greenwashing type concern. The diversity built across gender, race, and type of businesses as they collaborated around how they reached customers, how they planned their businesses, and how they engaged with suppliers. So we wanted to suggest that food prompted a really unique opportunity 
to bring together people organizing for change. So unlike what might be the typical lens on activism where it's fighting against an incumbent, um, what we found here was that you were fighting for each other and that this enabled a sense of partnership and collaboration that may be absent at different times and also opened up the doors to many people who may not have been active historically. And we characterize this through the sustainable partnerships that were built around food, where each of the partners on these different activities were helping to enable each other with an authentic commitment to each other as well as the broader movement goals, benefiting each other, connecting each other, and working with respect and humility as they built with that. So we want to continue to ask what food brings to your table and what people that helps you connect with. Thank you.